Hello. Um, so yeah, I'm Vicky Allen. He pretty much just introduced me. Um, so pretty much everything on that slide you've already been told. So moving on, I'm here because there is a striking lack of women in technology. All the stuff that Jason has just talked to you about, unfortunately, it's a bit of a boys' game, and we don't let girls join in that much. So 17%, that's less than one in five. I had a striking reminder of that today when I was in the toilet queue at lunchtime. You go to tech conferences, and I can just walk straight in, because generally there's only about five women there. So what I want to do, focus on today, we want to make toilet queues longer at tech conferences, please. Okay, that is our objective. Okay, so... Unfortunately, 17%, whereas in the world, it's a bit more 50-50, it's a bit more balanced. So, why don't we have more women working in technology? So, one thing that I think that we need to address is the stereotypes that currently come along with technology. At the moment, male coders are often seen as pizza-eating, energy-drink-guzzling, coffee addicts who spend all their time in their bedrooms. And that is just something that puts off those who are currently thinking about going into a career in technology. So, I did some market research using an app called OnePulse. It's an app where you can send off your question to 100 people around the country and they'll tell you what they think. So, I asked 100 random people, what comes to mind when you think of web developers or software developers? And here are a few of their answers. I was quite pleasantly surprised, actually, because most of the answers said that they were hard, creative, smart people. And people was my favorite bit. They're just people, like, they're not, there's no gender in that. They're simply people. So unfortunately, though, I did also get a few more things. I got the usual stereotypes. And this is what we need to address, because nobody wants to be a massive geek or a nerd. It's just not good. So I then asked the same 100 people, what comes to mind when you think of women who work as web developers or software developers? So. Whilst I had a lot of comments saying that, to be quite honest, they were exactly the same as men, it was also obvious that there was a clear knowledge of the fact that there is an issue. There were lots of comments about them being outnumbered by men and needing more of them. Also, though, I got the comments suggesting that maybe that they were doing well for being in a male-run industry. And a bit like the toilet queue, I don't want people saying, congratulations to me because I work as a web developer, because I am female. I want to be congratulated because I got that best job, because regardless of my gender, I did well. I don't want to be congratulated just because of my gender. So, up here, lots of faces of women in Norwich, or around the country, most of them in Norwich, who work as web developers or in other technical roles. So, say for example, six of them were really, really bad coders. Can anyone tell me which six they are? No, because what they look like, the color of their skin, their gender, has absolutely no bearing on how well they can like code. So, exactly the same as if there were men up there or a collection of both, you can't tell me, and that's really important. What they look like has absolutely no bearing. So, let's dispel some myths about careers in tech. Firstly, quite often I go out to schools and talk to, to students about having careers in tech or taking computing for GCSE. One thing quite a lot of people say to me is that they don't think they could take computing because they're not clever enough or they're not good enough at maths. And personally, you don't, I don't think you need to be a genius to be good at coding. You, you don't need to know loads of maths, you don't need to know your times tables, anything like that. To be quite honest, I work seven and a half hours a day as a web developer and I really don't do much maths. And if I do, I just Google it. Like, so, secondly, you don't need to have been coding since before you could walk. Quite often, I go to tech conferences, and there's people stood up on stage boasting about how they've been coding since they were two, or since they were five, or since they were nine. Now, I think this is such a shame, because for me, it puts me off. It makes me think that I'm not as good as them because I haven't been coding as long as them. But one thing you learn with coding, all experience means is they've failed more times, they've had more bugs, and all they know is how to do things. They found more ways to fix a problem. So all you have to do is start. You'll soon learn and you'll soon start fixing problems. So equally, you don't have to spend 24 hours a day coding. I had a job once where quite a lot of the coders who worked with me would go home every evening and code all evening. And they'd come back in and they'd talk all about what they've done and they'd genuinely make me feel bad that I didn't go home and code all night. I've learned though that, to be quite honest, all that means is that they know a little bit more about this project they've worked on. I think personally, 
I go home, the last thing I can even imagine doing would be coding. I go home and I relax and I think I'm a more all-rounded person, to be quite honest, because I have other interests other than coding. So, you don't even have to code at all if you don't want to. In fact, there's loads of jobs in tech. There's digital marketers, testers, project managers. You don't they have to code at all if you don't want to. So, I've said a few negatives. Why would you encourage your daughter or your student to go into a career in tech? Well, as Jason was saying, tech, to be quite honest, is here now, but it is also the future. Code is in absolutely everything. He stole my line. It's in your fridges. It's in your cars. It's in absolutely everything. So, how do I get girls to take up a career in tech? Well, here are some lovely books. Um, they're by a company in America called Code Babies. They're hardback books designed for babies, and they're meant to be given to them as soon as they're born, obviously, um, to get them introduced to the code syntax and just get them used to looking at code because it is as important as reading or writing. So giving it to them early is essential. Help them meet like-minded girls. Um, I'm the founder of Develop Her Code Club in Norwich, um, and we run sessions to help, um, it's for both genders, but to come together and to code. It's quite likely that if you have a girl who's interested in code, then if they're out and about, then they won't, in their classes, they will only have one or two other girls in their class, and the chances are they might not be that interested. So if you can get them out, meeting other girls, then that will be key to fueling their passion. So. You need to change, lastly, you need to change your own perceptions of women in tech. I don't care what you were said to at school, what you think about working in tech, I need you to get rid of absolutely every opinion you've ever been subject to. All you need to do is let them make up their own decisions. Whatever you do, don't say what my mum said to me, which is whatever you do, don't take IT for A-level, because I did exactly the opposite. I suppose that worked really, but yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, let them make up their own minds, and let's help girls not only keep up with the world, but let's help them push it forwards. Thank you.